Hey guys, I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Steve. Welcome to SourceFed. It's another sad day for the animal kingdom here on planet Earth as the St. Helena earwig has been declared extinct by people that determine that sort of thing. Let us honor its legacy by discussing its history. Back in 1798, Danish scientist Johann Christian Fabricius ventured to the watery purgatory that is St. Helena Island, located smack dab in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean. Fun fact, this was where Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled. And it was there that Johann became the first to describe the St. Helena giant earwig. Fun fact, frightening. I'm only speculating, but I assume Johann's quill scratched something akin to this into the parchment. Dearest parchment, the St. Helena giant earwig, named in honor of the island of which it is native, as well as because it is way friggin' bigger than the previously discovered normal size earwig, is nothing short of astonishing. Its sturdy body is capable of growing up to 3.3 inches in length, or 8.382 centimeters, or roughly the average length of a Swedishman's pointed finger. Its color is as black as the Nordic night, and its legs are a reddish hue, almost as as if they are blushing, flushed like the rosy cheeks of an English school child afflicted with attraction for the local butcher boy. Its intimidating forceps are a sight to behold, truly terrifying. I thank my lucky stars that this wondrous creature does not retain the ability to crawl into my ears and lay eggs in my brain. Could you imagine if somebody actually believed that to be true? It would be an astonishing feat of stupidity. I imagine some of you are freaked out by the concept of a bug being the biggest of its kind, especially ones that only live on one certain certain island and you don't see very often, and you're probably relieved by its eradication from existence. But to you, I say nay. This whole loss of unique species things that's happening on our planet right now is kind of a drag, even if it does induce night terrors. And if you take a second and stop judging a bug by its exoskeleton, you'd find out that this scary bug was actually very nurturing. The mothers were very devoted. They'd clean their eggs and provide healthy meals for their babies by regurgitating up num-nums. And in another adorable twist, the young would sleep beneath their mamas, reaping warmth and safety from the real nightmares of the world. Like the invasive rats and centipedes. And <coughs> humans. <coughs> oh, dang it, humans. <sighs> this is your fault. I'm sorry, go to your room. Yes, sir. So guys, what's your favorite bug? Please vividly describe it like a history person quilling into parchment. Yes, do that. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Steve Zaragoza. Joe, why'd you slap yourself? I get it. Oh, I was trying to throw up on cue. <laughs> <laughs>